Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kids Story Room. I'm sorry it's been such a long time since our last story. It's been a really busy time with work and the little peoples and getting time to write and record has been a bit tricky. But we're here now with a lovely story from Dale March coming right up. I have a few shout outs today to Noah and Aya, our new Patreon patrons. Thank you so much. Your support is so very much appreciated. Also, thank you for your support to Joe and Christy and Maggie, who is five. You are all wonderful. To Grace, Abigail, Remy and Thea, Indira and Evie, thanks for your story requests. I can't promise I'll be able to get around to writing them just now, but I love all your ideas and I will try down the track. And now to today's story. It's a wondrous wandering. It's a long one, good for a car ride or an Arvo rest time maybe. Enjoy. The Princess and the Grain of Sand by Dale March Not so long ago, and not so far away, there lived a princess who had everything she could possibly dream of. Her parents were good and kind people, but they were also very busy. The land they ruled was filled with confusion. Few crops grew. Many of the animals had wandered off to other parts of the country because the fences weren't mended, and the people often walked the streets quite aimlessly. The princess was once as all children are, wide-eyed with wonder and curious as a cat. Before she could talk, she had spent hours amusing herself with the simplest things, undoing and refastening the lid of a jar, or tearing up a sheet of cardboard and creating her own patterns out of the pieces, her green eyes darting with bright delight and wonder. But once she began to talk, everything changed. Once she found the words, I want, a whole new world opened up to her. It seemed that the only answer the Queen had for her darling princess was, Of course, my dear. And so... Whatever the princess asked for, she was sure to receive. However, no sooner had she received her latest gift than she was bored with it and asking for something else. Something newer, something shinier, something different. You can imagine how quickly the palace filled with toys and gadgets. There was an entire ballroom filled with dolls, the stables were bursting with animals. Horses and ponies were only the start of it. The princess had her very own zoo. Even if she had spent every day of the year with a different animal, she still wouldn't have seen them all by the time Christmas came around again. There were several rooms devoted to mechanical toys, cars and planes, robots and animated creatures, racing trains and even flashing rides. The king and queen had their moments of exasperation. Good grief, my dear. If things keep up like this, we will need another palace, just so we have somewhere to hold next month's gala. But they were always too busy to do anything differently. There was only one room in the palace that was not filled with toys. It was the only room the princess had never been in. And it was the only room the Queen seemed quite strange about. Anywhere, the Queen would holler, you can go anywhere you like. I don't mind if you climb on the roof, but you may not enter the room at the end of the east wing. But why not, the Princess would always ask. Because I forbid it, was the only reply she ever received. 
Perhaps, somewhere deep in her secret thoughts, the princess imagined that if she filled the rest of the castle with toys and animals, then finally one day they would have to open the room at the end of the East Wing because there would be nowhere else to put things. And so, day after day, the palace was cluttered with toys that were barely touched, rarely enjoyed, and certainly never loved. One year, as the winter closed in on the kingdom, the queen and king were called away for an urgent assembly. Storms of ice rain had struck early in the north and all the roads to the border were blocked by fallen trees. There was extra confusion among the people and the rulers were needed to help restore order. The queen had said very little before she left. She was in a great rush packing for the journey. But as she hurried out, the queen saw the princess peeping out at the carriage from behind the curtains. Darling, remember what I have told you. You can go anywhere in the castle except the room at the end of the east wing. Yes, Mama, replied the princess quietly. And darling, you will have all your meals in the kitchen with cook, and nurse will be here if you need anything else. Yes, Mama. And then, as she sprang to the door, Mama, how long will you be away? But the carriage door had closed, and the big wheels now crunched loudly as the king and queen sped off towards the north. The princess had known the cook and the nurse since as long as she could remember. Still, as she watched the carriage disappear into the cover of the trees, she felt very much alone. As the day rolled on, a grey thunderstorm tumbled over the hills and forests. For a few brief moments, the princess enjoyed finding shapes in the billowing clouds, but soon she lost interest and the entire sky became a blanket of thick, rumbling purple. With every crack of thunder, tremendous slashes of white lit up the forests, and soon sheets of ice rain pounded the empty castle. The storms of the north had arrived. Once, the scene outside would have delighted and terrified the princess. Now, it seemed to do nothing. If only I was scared, she muttered to herself. At least the storm would be interesting. How dull it is. Just grey and wet and ice and cold. And who really cares about lightning? It's just bright bits in the sky. And they don't even last very long. The princess lumbered up to her book room. She shuffled through the shelves. There were thousands of books. The carpenter had even built a platform with a ladder so every inch up to the ceiling could be stacked with stories, but not one of them was of any interest now. All old, exclaimed the princess in a huff. I need new books. But she knew it was no good asking the cook or the nurse, and even if the queen was home, no one would go out in this weather. And so, the princess skulked from room to room, shuffling through toys and dolls, machines and puzzles, hopelessly looking for something that might be fun, hoping she might find a treasure she had forgotten ever receiving. Maybe then she could enjoy it for a moment while it felt new. But no luck. Everything was old, everything was dull, everything was boring. The days and nights passed. In fact, it was hard to know what was day and what was night. The thick cover of clouds made it seem as if the sun had been turned off. And the princess never felt like getting up anyway. Come on, your highness, the nurse would sing in the mornings. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine, had your time, wakey, wakey. Cook has breakfast ready for us. Rise and shine? the princess would grumble. There's nothing rising or shining that I can see. Eventually, the princess was sleeping far more in the day than in the night time. Roaming the palace at night with a candle, at least she felt that things were a little bit different. Some nights, 
She even got a little fright as a door creaked in the draught or a clock clanged its chime in the midnight stillness. One night, dozing off where she had slumped against the piano, the princess was woken by a tickle at her ankle. There was just enough light from her candle to see a scruffy mouse licking its paws by her foot. As it cleaned itself, the tiny creature's tail flicked against the girl's skin until she twitched her leg with a giggle. Jumping with fright, the mouse sprang towards the door and scurried off into the hallway. The princess was instantly up and after the mouse. With any luck, she could catch this little friend and have a new pet, something new. But, rushing round the corner, her candle blew out and the chase seemed over before it had begun. The princess was about to curse when she heard the scuttle of tiny claws on the wood floor. Of course, thought the princess, I can follow its sound. She kicked off her slippers and crept on. In the darkness, the girl's ears opened like funnels. From room to room she followed the scuffle and scratch of the mouse's footsteps. It was a thrilling game. The princess was delighted that with bare feet she could be even quieter than a mouse. And now, up ahead for the first time, she saw the little creature dart into a doorway. The rising moon had peeked through the clouds and the pale light showed the mouse's shadow stretching across the floor. Straining to her utmost delicacy, the princess tiptoed to the doorway. She was just ready to peep into the room when the floorboard beneath her shrieked like an owl. Immediately the mouse squeezed under a closed door. All the princess saw was the tip of its pink tail flash out of sight. In half a moment the princess was turning the doorknob as quietly as she could, but the door wouldn't budge. It was locked. She shook and tugged, pressed and pulled. Below, she finally exclaimed. She had come so far, following her new friend through the dark, finally something interesting, now to be locked out in her own palace. Ah! Why would this door be locked anyway? All at once it dawned on her. The princess took a step back. She turned and looked around the pale moonlit room. She looked back at the locked door. She was in the east wing of the palace. She was at the last room of the east wing. The only room she was not allowed to enter. Ah! Oh, she exclaimed again. Why can't I go in there? What are they hiding? What's the use of a room that no one uses? Grown-ups have such annoying rules. With this, she stomped her foot with a great stamp. Ha! Oh, how that hurt her heel. But in the silent second that followed, a tinkle of metal rang out. What was that? The princess took a step back and bent low to peek under the door. A dull silver glint shone through the gap. Could it be that her stamp had bumped out the key from the inside handle? A thrill rushed through her. Sliding her fingers under the door, she squeezed and squeezed until the tip of her finger felt the cold metal. With the smallest twist, she could just hook a tiny ridge with her fingernail and bit by bit scrape it across the floor and under the door. Yes, a key. It was a key. The key slid effortlessly into the lock and turned, but a new trouble gripped her. Why was it forbidden to enter this room? Her mother was not mean. She also wasn't silly. There must surely be a good reason to stay away, maybe even some danger that the Queen wanted to protect her daughter from. But the mouse, the darkness... The moonlight, the adventure of it all was too strong. Without even noticing that she had made a decision, the princess felt her hand pressing against the cool door and watched it swing silently open. Blackness. 
complete dark, and the cool air from the midnight passages of the palace now blew at the girl's back, urging her on. With hands outstretched, she placed each step with caution. She was pausing for a moment to see if there was any signal from the mouse to be heard when the door swung closed behind her. With the loud crack of the closing door, the room immediately lit up with blinding white light. It took a moment for the girl's eyes to adjust, but soon, squinting against the brightness, she began to make out the space around her. The first shock was the discovery that she was surrounded by... herself! The room was a large circle with mirror after mirror lining every inch of the walls. No matter where she turned, infinite rows of reflections stretched back into the distance like well-trained soldiers. Even the floor was a huge reflecting glass throwing her image straight back at her. Looking up to escape the stare of so many reflections, she found that the shining walls reached up until they disappeared into the whiteness. Only now, closing her eyes against the glare, did the girl hear the familiar sound of faint scratching. She opened one eye, ever so little. There, right in the centre of the room, sat the mouse. Its delicate nose twitched with curiosity at something at its feet. The mouse was so absorbed it did not notice the girl now creeping up on it. What happened next was quite enough to make anyone stagger with disbelief. The princess had just decided that she would grab the mouse by surprise when right there in front of her it bent its twitching nose to touch the floor and... vanished. The princess blinked. She rubbed her eyes. She blinked longer. She looked all around. Had she fallen asleep for a moment and the mouse had run away? She hurried to the walls and ran all the way around looking for the door. Surely that was the only way the mouse could have escaped. But every piece of the mirror joined tight to the next. Just like the mouse, the door had disappeared. Her tummy churned. How she wished now she could be back in the moonlit room of her library, or even searching through old boring toys. The princess was ready to crumple to the floor with despair when an idea struck her. Back in the centre of the room, she got down on her hands and knees. Perhaps, just somehow, there was a trapdoor. Some hidden flap the mouse had fallen through to disappear so suddenly. Nothing only the perfectly clear, polished mirror. Except, what was this? One lonely grain of sand. Just this one, right in the very centre of the room. As she looked more closely at the grain of sand, she noticed a new detail. There in the heart of the glassy grain was a warm golden fleck tiny flame. Leaning in even closer, her nose almost touching the floor, she realised this was just where the mouse had been. The princess reached out to press her finger onto the grain and pick it up. At the instant she touched the sand, all light snapped off again. Now the cool wind of the darkness rushed past her at a galloping speed. It was impossible to know if she was being flown through the empty space or if she was still and the space all round was flying past. Soon the racing wind warmed. For a time it was almost pleasant. But bit by bit the air grew hotter and the galloping wind began spinning until... Poof! With a light thud, the lights were back on and the girl was coughing in a cloud of dust. Waving her hands to clear the air, the dust gradually settled and the princess found herself surrounded by just three things. Sky, a glaring sun and sand. 
dunes rolled out as far as she could see, and the sky was one fixed blue from horizon to dazzling horizon. It was hot. Almost at once she felt her skin in danger of burning. She knew that the shimmering blue pools she saw ahead were only a trick of the heat, but it would do no good to stay still. As she set her course and took her first step, the sand before her shared a secret that made her heart leap. Pressed into the endless rippling dunes were tiny tracks from delicate feet. The mouse! That cheeky little mouse was here, somewhere ahead. The princess took off at a run, but it wasn't long before she had slowed to a creeping walk, and soon the hope of finding the mouse was wearing off. Endless sand. Endless heat. Endless blue sky. How dull for a sky to be just one blue, the princess thought to herself, slumping onto her side. How the cool hallways of the palace and even the ice rain seemed a comforting thought now. And yet, she thought, with her head nodding from exhaustion, how exactly can the sky be so blue? And how does all this sand get made and end up in the same place? It was just as this curiosity lit up in her mind that a welcome coolness drifted over her. Her eyes watered with some dust that had got stuck there, and she squinted to see what was happening. A cloud? But, looking up, she discovered something far more miraculous. Just above her, with broad, thick wings, a great bird patiently hovered as it blocked the beating sun from the stranded girl. Hello, called the princess. Hello up there, you clever bird. The huge wings flapped silently. Standing in wonder, the girl called again. Hello, thank you, thank you. The bird stared straight ahead. Yes, that's where I was going, wherever that is. I was following this mouse's tracks. Surely if a mouse can make it through the desert, I can. But I'm not so sure. With this, the shadow inched forward and the girl found herself again in the direct blaze of the sun. She stepped forward into the shade of the bird and found again that it moved ahead. I see, I see. You'll go with me? You'll shade me? You great creature? And so they travelled, all through the heat of the day, following the faint tracks of the mouse. A strange feeling came over the princess as she strode through the desert under her flying umbrella. To her surprise, and even despite the dust still irritating her eye, the girl even found that she was enjoying herself. She still had no idea where they might be going or how she could possibly find her way home. But the sand felt soft and comforting between her toes, and she even noticed now a smell in the desert that was clean and sweet. There was nothing new, nothing different, but there was so much to notice and enjoy. Slowly, the shadows of the sand dunes stretched their bellies over the golden desert and the sun sank into its pillow of pink. Look at that! The princess called up to her companion, rubbing her itchy eye. The sky goes from almost white to peach to a light orange and into that faint blue, but you can't even tell where it changes. She had never noticed it before. Do you see that, great creature? But when she looked up, her guardian was nowhere to be seen. The princess nodded with a smile. I see. Goodbye, sun. Goodbye, umbrella. 
the desert was transformed with the soft light of dusk. Instead of stark lines and blocks of colour, there was new detail all around her. Most curious of all was the shape of the dunes up ahead. They no longer had the gentle roll of lazy bodies, but stood like a great city of pyramids. The girl was reminded of the room of mirrors that seemed like a lifetime away. Like her reflection lining up into the distance, so the rows of pyramids stretched into the fading dusk. Are you quite all right there? The princess was startled by an abrupt cooing voice. Looking down, she saw an extraordinary sight. A sandy-coloured bird with wings striped like a zebra and a bright orange crown of feathers was squatting at her feet. If a talking bird wasn't strange enough, the animal was straining against the weight of a miniature backpack. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, I'm quite all right, I think, replied the girl. You think, do you? snorted the bird. No time for thinking out here. On with the job and off it hopped towards the Pyramid City. Excuse me, called the girl as she hurried after this odd new company. Where am I? Oh dear, are you blind? said the bird without even turning back. We are in the desert, of course. Uh, yes, yes, I know it's the desert. I mean this place. It's obviously some kind of city or something. It looks very organised and planned, but it also looks like just lots of piles of sand. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Lots of piles of sand? How dare you? You ought to have your mouth washed out with salt. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Piles of sand? You are blind. You, strange traveller, are entering the great beginning. You are entering Supply City. You are entering the birth. The birth? Death as well. Yes, the birth. Where do you think everything comes from? The tin for your toys, the bones for your pony, the stars you gaze on at night, the pale moon through the windows of the east wing, not to mention the souls of your little dolls, the ideas in your books, imagination, even those pretty little eyes, although they do look a little irritated. The princess rubbed her eyes. They had begun to sting again. Where do you think all of that comes from? The princess had opened her mouth to speak, but the bird jumped straight in. Wrong! They come from here. Everything is born here, at the birth. And who do you think organises all this for you and your people? That's right, we do. They had walked deeper into the Pyramid City now, and as the girl looked up, she saw for the first time that they were not alone. Countless orange-crowned zebra birds flew and hopped about all around them. Each animal was intent on work, emptying their backpacks or dutifully stacking grain upon grain of sand. The princess's mouth fell open. So, you build these pyramids? Who are you? Of course we did, replied the bird, with more than a touch of pride in its voice. And I am Hoopo three trillion and one. Three trillion and one. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a delivery to make. But the girl's curiosity was full to bursting. Wait, please, I have to understand. Why are you piling up all this sand? The sand is in piles anyway, all over the desert. The desert is one big sand pile. What difference does it make to stack it in rows? What difference does it make? You said you organise it all for us, but what are you organising? Hoopo three trillion and one looked like he may explode with frustration. That's it, he shrieked. You are coming with me, you feather-headed human. You are coming with me for a tour. With that, the Hoopo marched ahead with the determination of an Olympic competitor. First stop, stars. 
They halted by a huge pyramid, and the bird bent down and plucked a single grain of sand in its beak. Here, he mumbled, take this. What do you see? The princess let the grain fall into the palm of her hand and raised it to her face. She rubbed her sore eye and squinted. What do I see? It's a grain of sand. Wrong! Blind! We need a city for these alone. Star sand! The universe is expanding every moment and there is no end of the need for more stars. Look closer! As the girl held the speck up to the fading sky, the hoopoe continued, Black and silver flecks inside, very distinct. We have armies of hoopoes out in the desert 365 days of the year searching for these beauties, very distinguished occupation. It was true. Even in the dusk light she could make out the sparkles inside the dark core of the grain. Next stop, turtle dreams. At the next pyramid, the hoopoe again plucked a single grain and handed it to the girl. Well, what do you see? The princess was astonished. Is that really? Yes, feather-headed human, yes it is. These we call liquid blue, 1007 swirling shades of blue in a pure glass crystal casing. The birds who collect these need days off at a time. Their brains go all mushy collecting these, so they need time to rebalance. And these make the dreams of turtles? whispered the astonished girl. Are you listening or not? Next! On and on they went, down the rows of pyramids. Even in the fading light, each category of sand was clearly visible. There were the solid white grains of lullabies, the earth red of cocoon designs, and the deep purple streaks used for swimming goggles. The princess had come to rest by a pyramid of frangipani scent. She was lost in silky strings of yellow that swirled inside the grain of sand when her hoopoe companion broke the silence. Over there is my delivery. They had reached the base of a towering pyramid where dozens of birds hopped around in great squabbles of activity. What is it? asked the girl. What have you been collecting? Oh dear. Of course you would have to ask. It's a sad story, this one. This mountain before you is children's wonder. It's a great trouble. As you can see, we have plenty here to spare, but somehow it's not getting used. There have been many arguments about whether this whole batch is somehow broken because it doesn't seem to be sticking in the children we send it to. Nevertheless, it is still one of the most valuable sands there are. The great quiet is still working tirelessly to fix the delivery process. Who knows? These things are beyond me. The great quiet? Ho, ho, ho! You will have to get your ears cleaned out, won't you? Yes, the great quiet. Someone has to organise the delivery process. We hoopos can't do everything. I suppose you'll be asking me to take you to meet her next. No such luck, feather-headed human. You can only meet the great quiet by invitation, and I see you don't have one. As I said, this is my stop. I would say nice to meet you, but it has been positively exhausting. And with that, Hoopo three trillion and one emptied his satchel of children's wonder sand and promptly fell asleep at the princess's feet. A dozen other birds scampered over and began stacking the new delivery in neat lines. Oh dear, the princess sighed. What was she to do now? The dusk light had almost completely faded and the cool of the night set in fast. All at once the princess noticed she was very hungry and very tired, and her eye was so sore she couldn't tell if she was crying from the stinging or from exhaustion. Hoopo three trillion and one was the only familiar thing in all the desert. 
the only thing that made sense was to lay down next to him and rest her head. Just as her watery eyes began falling closed, a scratching noise caught her attention. There, creeping out of Hoopo 3 trillion and one's backpack, was the mouse. It scurried straight over to the princess and rubbed its nose against hers to make sure she wasn't asleep. The princess was about to sit up when the mouse raised a tiny torch to her face. He shone the light in each of her eyes very earnestly. Then, before the girl had a chance to move, he shot his tiny claw in and pulled out a grain of sand from the corner of her eye. The mouse seemed to have no desire to escape now, but waited patiently for the princess to join him. She was led through paths that became narrower and narrower. It was dark now, and the mouse's torch soon came in handy. It wasn't long before they reached a stairway that led them down under the sand and deep into the belly of an enormous pyramid. Here, the air smelled of silent secrets. The girl had just begun bending her head in the shrinking tunnel when they came to a simple wooden door surrounded by candles. The mouse scratched several times at the door. Soon, a round, warm voice responded. Your message? To the girl's great surprise, the mouse replied, Golden eyes! The princess couldn't stop herself from blurting out, You can talk? The mouse didn't even have a chance to turn around before the door silently swung open. The princess let out a gasp. The room before her, in all its blinding emptiness, was the very same room of mirrors she had discovered at the end of the east wing in the palace. It can't be, she breathed. At her foot, the mouse gave her a comforting nudge. It's quite unsettling the first time, but of course the second time is no less strange. Would you like to ask her something? The princess peered in and looked all around the empty room. Ask who? The great quiet. All you need to do is step inside and ask her whatever you like. Touching her face to see if she was really awake, the girl entered the bright room of mirrors. As soon as she stepped in, she was surrounded again by thousands of reflections of herself all staring back at her wherever she turned. I don't understand, she said, turning to the mouse. But it was not the mouse who answered. A new voice spoke, and the floor gently shook with each word. What would you like to understand? The voice seemed to be coming from all around her. Ah, uh, well, began the princess, feeling very strange about talking to someone she couldn't see. I've somehow been through the desert, and now I'm back here where I started. How did I get here? Steadily the voice replied, You followed your wonder. That will always lead one on terrific journeys. My wonder? Your curiosity. You found a grain of sand on this floor and you took the time to really look. Yes, that grain you hold in your hand. The princess opened her clenched fist and held the grain to her eye. Yes, it was the very same piece of sand she had seen in the middle of this room after the mouse had vanished. A warm golden fleck, a tiny flame flickered in the centre. You have seen the rows of children's wonder pyramids. Hoopo three trillion and one has told you the grave problem of delivery. Children's wonder is being lost, forgotten. And when the wonder of children is lost, sadness is not far away. 
The children who always need new shiny things turn into grown-ups who only ever long for what is bigger and better. Those grown-ups lose all faith in the goodness of life. They lose all love for the world. The princess felt a tear tumble down her cheek. She didn't understand exactly what the great quiet was saying, but she could feel in her heart that it was all true. After a long silence, the voice spoke again. You have another question. Yes, said the princess simply. Hoopo three trillion and one told me that no one ever meets you without an invitation. Why am I here without being invited? Back at the door, the mouse gave a little squeak and held up his paw. I invited you when you were asleep on the floor by the piano. The princess could only respond by letting her mouth fall open with the mystery of it all. And now, said the voice again, it is time for you to return home. But, began the girl, yes. Everything you say is true. All the grown-ups do seem sad and my parents are gone and there is nothing that... The girl stopped herself. Ah, came the soothing voice. You are imagining that nothing has changed. You are imagining that the adventure ends here. That you will come home to the same toys and the same books and the same icy weather and empty palace. But, my dear, everything is always changing. Everything if every grain of sand can be so different, just imagine how different every day can be. Every meal and drink, every creature and game, every kind word and moment of laughter. Every time you read a book, you will hear it afresh. Every time you pick up a toy, a new game can occur to you. It is not the toy or the weather that needs to change. Only your own eyes only the curiosity in your own heart. Another tear rolled down the princess's cheek, but this time it came with a smile. The door is right behind you. The princess turned. Looking through the door, she could now see the familiar shapes of the palace's east wing. The mouse now stood on his back legs and gave a twinkling wink before spinning around and rushing back into the palace. Ah! <sighs> With a huge sigh of hope, the princess left the bright room of mirrors and returned to her home, where the morning sun was glowing warm through the tall windows. When the king and queen returned home from the north, they were met with a staggering surprise. The cluttered castle was now empty and clean. The princess had given almost every one of her toys to the other children in the land. She had delivered them all herself, walking from door to door. She spent time with each child, explaining to them every fine detail of the gift, and the children's eyes lit up with wonder. With the royal stable so well suited for animals, the princess kept these and looked after them with great care. The zoo was open for all to visit. The king and queen invited the townspeople to offer ideas for the empty rooms in the palace. Now the ballroom is a storage house for grain and root vegetables. There is a new bakery and brewery operating, a design house for clothing, and there is an artist's studio in the library. There is also a small toy factory, of course. Only one room still remains empty. The room at the end of the east wing. But you and I both know it is filled with adventure and wonder.